This is a test recording to see if I'm in focus because I can't see myself from this far away. Oh crap. <laughs> I kicked the camera, so now I really don't know if it's in focus while I was recording. We'll see. Yep, looks good. <laughs> Alright. Well, we'll see how this goes. So people talk like they know Jesus, but in reality, they know a bunch of stuff about him. It's like they've gone through his Instagram and they see what a bunch of his favorite foods are and the bros he likes to hang out with, and they read that he likes to keep the party going. Somewhere along the way, he talked about being a god man too, but you know, that, that part doesn't really matter. And they're like, oh yeah, I love Jesus. Yeah, I love that guy. I know him, you know Jesus, yeah. But you see people try learning all these things and so they focus on their prayer life and they read their Bible and they read guys like Spurgeon and Tozer and C.S. Lewis and Bonhoeffer and St. Augustine and they're name dropping all these guys who actually knew Jesus and eventually they come to find out that they still feel pretty far away from him. And then they get discouraged and turn away from the faith and they say something like, yo man, I tried Jesus. It just didn't really work out for me. But they never really tried Jesus. They didn't taste and see that the Lord is good. They just cyber-stalked him and said, oh, it's not going to work. But the thing about Jesus is that the more you get to know him and not just the stuff about him, the more you start to love him. And the more you start to love him, the more you want to please him. And the more you want to please him, the greater your intimacy will be with him. It's not... I will please God so he can accept me. It is. Jesus is my love. I know him deeply. And I walk with him daily. And some people are asking, how do I increase my intimacy with Jesus? And my answer to you would be this. When my mentors taught me, whenever things get foggy, if you want to grow with God, it's not complicated, it's just costly. Gotta spend that time currently. See, getting to know Jesus is just like getting to know any other person, but so many people treat it like getting to know a car. They think that if I press the gas pedal this much, then he will go this fast, and if I turn the wheel this much, then he'll swerve this much. But Jesus isn't the car. Your life is the car. Jesus is the guy sitting next to you in the car, and you're the one driving the car, and he's just telling you about his favorite roads along the way. Lest this analogy get too close to... Jesus, take the wheel. Let's switch gears a little bit. Even still, many people are asking, okay, Ron, how do I even start to know Jesus? Because I tried that whole thing, and like I said, it didn't work. Well, one of my personality strengths is getting to know people, and so when I see someone that I admire from afar, I'm like, hey, I think you're pretty neat, but I respect your distance. Real awkward, like, but most of the time it works out. The point I'm trying to make here is that this kind of relationship starts with asking, and you don't have to worry about having a strong personality type in order to come to Jesus. The only things he asks for are a broken and contrite heart. Now mind you, this kind of relationship only starts with asking, and this is why we pray, Lord, I'm far from you. I'm in need. I don't know you, but I want to. So if you're there, Come here. Come and make yourself at home. Here. And he does come in. And that is the point of salvation. Now I want to say again, the relationship only starts with asking. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Then we get into finding a teacher who can help you get on your feet in walking with Jesus. Because like I said, the more you get to know him, the more you love him. And the more you love him, the more you want to please him. Just like a lot of other people you love. So it started off as a formal make your home here over the course of time becomes, of course you can change the atmosphere of this house. Make this heart your home and rearrange whatever you need to in this heart so that you'd be more comfortable. But you know what the coolest part is? Jesus rearranges the house, the heart, 
in a way that makes it easier for you guys to spend time together. He takes a chainsaw to your sagging couch of laziness and you're like, NOT MY FAVORITE COUCH! And he's like... Okay, so all I had is a jigsaw, whatever, you get the point. I need to invest in a chainsaw. But he just completely destroys your couch. And all that's left is this pile of shredded cotton and wood. And as you sit there crying over your beloved couch that has just been turned to rubble, why? The carpenter begins to piece together from that pile of trash a coffee table. And he builds two chairs. And of course he uses the leather from the old couch to make the plush bottom for your chair. And after he's finished, he takes a seat and sips his beverage and looks at you and says, Come and sit with me. Look, I don't know whether or not you've tried Jesus or whether or not you think he's worked for you. I don't know if you're at the end of your rope or just beginning this journey, but I know that our God is in the business of taking broken things and making them new. I know that he's in the business of breaking what needs to be broken so that he can create something which can't be broken. I'll see y'all later. Man, I need a back cave just to get away. Uh, Jesus retreated. Ooh, to speak with his father, I know that I need it. My career been growing, but tell me where I'm going. If my time with God is depleted. Nowhere. God, I'm sorry, I mean it. Yeah. All I want to do is walk with you, but my priorities wrong. I talk about you more than I talk with you. Uh.